YouTube stream to start. <laughs> we're, we're live, Dale. Um, the YouTube stream takes a minute or two because I have to actually start it separately. So it's setting up the YouTube live at present. And we have people joining. Sorry, let me mute YouTube so I don't hear myself talking at the same time. Um, awesome. Yes. Alan, welcome, alone. Anne, Faye, Hans, Marcelo, good to see you. Rupa, always a pleasure. Samir, uh, Sergey, Shane, Todd, Vladimir, welcome. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. We're going to leave just a minute or two for some more folks to join. Uh, bit of housekeeping, whether you're watching live on the Zoom because you've registered or whether you're on YouTube, um, Questions and answers are open in both places. Please feel free to raise questions as you have them. We'll make sure that we leave time at the end, if possible, to address as many of them as we can. We're going to get kicked off here in just a minute or two. Lorenzo, welcome. Chris, it's good to see you here. So many interesting people, so many familiar names. Feihan, nice to see you. Welcome, my friend. And always happy to see you. Ilya Balasov, welcome. Lorenzo, I hope something will be interesting for you today. Javier Santana, welcome. Awesome. Well, I continue to see people joining in both Zoom and on the live stream on YouTube. So let me start with just a, a quick welcome to make sure that we have enough time for Alexa to cover the content. Uh, truly a delight to have you here on what is a extraordinarily rainy and cold day uh, for Alexa and I in Amsterdam. And it turns out the same for Dale as well. It's 22.11 time, uh, which is Super exciting, and I'm, I'm stoked to, to learn quite a bit about what's in it. So with that, Dale, I'll go ahead and pop off video and hand it off to you and Alexei. Yeah, so you said, unusually rainy day. Yeah, I'm in my t-shirt, as usual. And I'm in my jumper, because it's so cold in Portugal, here in Portugal. Uh, so hopefully, anybody, well, hopefully you're all aware of who Alexei is. He's obviously our CTO and Oracle of all things ClickHouse and the original creator. Uh, I'm Dale, I was here last month, but if you've if we've not met, I'm part of the product team here at ClickHouse and will be Alexi's assistant today. So we'll go over some new features and highlight some performance improvements. And Alexi will no doubt have some challenges for us, uh, for which the first or best answer gets one of our, one of our lovely t-shirts as modeled by Alexi. So for those of you who do love black t-shirts, we also have a challenge currently advertised in one of our blog posts uh, where you can win one if you're not lucky enough to win one today. Uh, it involves a particularly tricky query where you need to reproduce the git blame command with the history of commits from ClickHouse. So I'll put the link in chat and we look forward to some suggestions. Don't feel like you need to answer that one today though. We're gonna keep that competition open for a month and announce the winner probably on the next release webinar. So you can either send us a, an email or uh, tweet us or just do a PR on the, on the docs themselves. And the person that gets closest to solving that will also send them a t-shirt. So before we start, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we wanna highlight some events that we've got coming up. So we have meetups in Stockholm, Berlin, New York in December. And I'll put the link in chat for those of you that are close enough to be able to attend one of those. We'd love to see, hopefully some people here can make it. 
And we also have an onboarding workshop for ClickHouse on November the 29th. So you can find that on our website if you go to the news and events page for you, for those of you that are getting started with ClickHouse. And as Tyler said, please ask questions in either the Zoom chat today or the Q&A or also in uh, YouTube. I'll collate those and we'll get and we'll try to answer them all at the end. So, and now over to Alexi for some exciting news as to how ClickHouse is more serverless than ever before. Uh, yeah, one question for you, Dale. So imagine what if, what if I did not prepare any content and you will have to spend one hour presenting some topics. What if, what topics you will present? I would probably present some work that I've done recently analyzing commits on our repo. So the history, who's, who are the top committers on certain files, who, who has the longest sequence of commits, um, who likes to delete other people's code. Uh, and then I would probably try and think of some of the features that we are adding today. But I think I'm going to be surprised by even some of them. Okay. Probably it's for, for our next webinar. Because today I, I do have content. content. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so about uh, this release today, uh, I will try to spend less than one hour explaining new features, highlighting new improvements. So what it is? 22.11, it is our November release. It has a couple of new features a few performance optimizations, and as usual, a lot of bug fixes. Uh, let's start with something simple. Uh, the first improvement is about complex time intervals. You know, you can do arithmetic with time and you can specify interval in any type. Uh, like in months, in years, in quarters, in days, in nanoseconds, if you like. So this query already works for, I don't know, five years. You can also write like this interval in uh, quotes. You can also change these operations like add one month and subtract two days. And uh, it it is not so trivial because uh, it is difficult to reason how exactly this interval arithmetic works. So if you have January 31st and you will add one month, what you will get? Probably you will get February 28th, maybe uh, February 29th if you are lucky. Uh, so it is unclear. And starting from uh, the version 22.11, you can also chain these intervals and write complex intervals in a single string literal. You can also do arithmetic on top of intervals and then use this result as a complex interval to apply it for some date or time. And you can even uh, use this interval type as a standalone type. Store them in tables and after this uh, apply uh, for some date and time. Let me try to demonstrate how does it look. So I will just copy paste some Sorry, copy paste some queries uh, to whatever whatever ClickHouse I have. I have ClickHouse local on my machine. So let's start with this query. Okay, so today I have November 17th. I have added one month, it will be December 17th and subtracted two days. Looks, looks perfect. If I just select this interval, how does it look? 
it looks like a tuple. And, but what is the type of this tuple? Actually, it is a tuple of two integral types. And if I add something else like this, uh, you can see that uh, the months uh, don't cancel out. You cannot just sum them because interval arithmetic is not commutative. It makes sense uh, what you will do the first. If you add one month and then one day, it is not the same as if you add one day and then add one month. Okay, let's go further. This is even more interesting. The support for star, star, globe. What is it? Can you count the number of stars in this query? Let me try. We have one star, two, three, and four. So what is it? When you select from external uh, data, external file system, or from local file system, you can specify path to your files. And in this path, you can specify globes, like patterns. And for these globes, you can specify star for uh, arbitrary, arbitrary number of characters. You can specify question mark for just one character, uh, a set of alternatives, a number interval, or a number interval with zero padding. Now we also added this double star. And this double star represents arbitrary number of subdirectories. It will do recursive subdirectory traversal. So this query will work and it will find these tab separated files in all the levels. Okay, actually you don't have to believe me that this query will work and I don't have to believe because I want to try something. I want to, to go and try some queries and do something interesting. So let me go to the terminal and And I will try to do something fancy, something unusual just for you. But mainly I will do just copy pasting some queries again. So this is ClickHouse Local, one of my favorite tools after ClickHouse Server. Uh, and let's try to do recursive directory traversal in the directory with ClickHouse source code. So I will try to find C++ source code and C++ header files. So I am using this globe and another globe and yet another globe. And I will read every file as a, just a set of lines. And let's see what will happen. <clears throat> so we have slightly less than 1 million lines of code. And uh, the size is 28 megabytes. So it works. Let's also try something more interesting. What are the most popular lines of code in our repository. Can you guess the answer? Uh, please write your answer uh, to the chat. Any ideas? What are the most popular lines of code? The most repeating lines of code? Maybe it is something like catch exception. Maybe it is something like return or false, whatever. And if you guess correct, if you will guess correctly, 
We will send you a t-shirt. Okay. Three seconds to write your answer. One, two, three. And the answer is, so the query is quite fast and the answer is empty line is the most popular. Then for some unusual reason, we have empty string literal. And then something interesting happens. Opening uh, brace, closing brace. For some unclear reason, we have slightly more opening curly braces than closing curly braces. So looks like our code is unbalanced. But if you if you will tell me why exactly it is unbalanced, I will send you a second T-shirt. So please try, try to guess. And about this line of code, it is kind of strange and it is quite easy to analyze and easy to filter. It is just generated code. And to filter it, I will use this underscore path virtual column. Okay, now it is way better. It is actually one of the most beautiful reports I have ever seen. So do we have answers? Do we have correct answers? We do have a correct answer. Uh, I was actually going to guess empty lines, but uh, so I'm glad I didn't put that in the chat because I was going to say excluding empty lines, but... Uh, Arseni managed to guess the opening curly brace. Uh, lots of guesses for closing braces as well. Mm -hmm. but opening brace was, uh, he, I believe they got that. Arseni got that first. Uh, and one question for you, Dale. Uh, who is the engineer uh, who has written the most of closing curly braces? Uh, you don't have to go and run a query. No, job. no, I, I am. Um, um, I'm going to say it's either yourself or Alexander Sapin. Yeah, most likely, or Nikolai Kochetov, or Ksenia. We can check. Uh, but let's go to the next feature. Some functions for Spark compatibility. So there are. Clickhouse users who also have some misfortune of using Spark. Maybe they are using Hadoop, but they also using Spark and Spark SQL, and they want to migrate to Clickhouse. Or not necessarily to migrate, maybe they just want to use Clickhouse with Spark. Maybe Spark is not not too bad technology. Maybe it makes sense to use Spark sometimes, but it makes even more sense to use ClickHouse instead of Spark. So uh, the developer, Tai Yang Li, added three new functions. One of them is PMOD or positive modular. It is for remainder of division. If you write simply uh, modular for remainder of division in SQL, in ClickHouse SQL, and do it for some negative number. In C++, in uh, x86 and ARM CPU, in ClickHouse SQL, it will give you answer like this. So the function modulo is symmetric uh, with respect to, to zero. For negative numbers, it will give you the negative result uh, of the result of modulo of negated argument. Okay, maybe it is not so clear, but uh, the reason we have another function is that it is more consistent 
it is consistent with the notion of modular arithmetic. If you get rem if you want to get remainder of division of like minus one to ten from the standpoint of modular arithmetic, you should get a number be between zero and nine. And obviously it should be nine. So now we have a function for this. Okay, enough arithmetics. Let's go to something more interesting. <clears throat> even more interesting functions. One is for practice printing of the sizes. So we have already have format readable size function, and now we have format readable decimal size implemented by Alejandro. So I tested this function and figured out that I have SSD of size 1.79 TIB or 1.97 terabytes. And the latter is looks much better. By the way, I bo bought it like two terabytes SSD, but never mind. And another function is display name. So you can use uh, the function host name to get the host name. If you have a cluster, it makes sense to group by host name. But if you have a cluster inside Kubernetes, Kubernetes, you will have these long host names and they are mostly useless. So instead of using host name, you can specify server display name in the configuration file and you will get exactly the same as before this smiley what else and this is probably the best improvement that we have in the new release so about insert queries into replicated merge tree tables. How many times you had uh, a situation when you are running a really long insert query? So you are moving billions, hundreds of billions, maybe trillions of data with a single insert query. And it will go with a pretty good speed, but it will take multiple hours, multiple hours. And maybe in the middle, it will give you uh, something like session expired, connection closed. You will have to start over again. Sorry, <laughs> connection to ClickHouse Keeper is lost. I don't think it is a good behavior, but we had this behavior before uh, the new release 22.11. But now starting from the new release, it will do retries automatically. If you set, if you enable this setting, it is not by default in this release. But I hope we will uh, set it by default in the next release. But starting from this version, just enable this setting and forget about any worries. I want to ask Dale. Dale, uh, what do you think about this specific feature? <laughs> well, as you know, I needed this today. Um, so yeah, I'm quite excited about this. Uh, I, have, I actually have a question about it, not someone has asked, but I do know the answer, but I think it might be interesting is that I assume you, I know you can control back off and retry behavior for this. Mm -hmm. there any, maybe you're about to mention that. I think that's... Yeah, you can, but it, it is like advanced advanced settings for advanced users. By default, back off, uh, back off time, back off uh, increase, all of them are just fine. So don't touch and everything will be all right. Okay, let's go to something something even 
more interesting. It is about data lakes. To be honest, I don't like this term, data lake. I don't like the term big data, data whatever, and now it is data lake. This term is not invented here, so I don't like it. I like ClickHouse. But actually, ClickHouse can work with data lakes, with external data. And ClickHouse is very flexible. It can work as a server with ClickHouse server or as a standalone tool without even any installation. You just download ClickHouse, you run ClickHouse local, and you process your data. It can be external data in on S3, external data in some HTTP endpoint, local data on local file system. It can process this data on the fly. You can install ClickHouse and store your data and it will be much better. You can process data from MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB. And if you use ClickHouse to query MySQL, you will find out that ClickHouse accelerating MySQL. So you can even take ClickHouse and make MongoDB queries and it will make Mon MongoDB web scale again. And it has support for every data format you will ever need. Literally everything. If you know some data format that ClickHouse does not support yet, Please write in the comments and someone from my team will implement this data format for you. Okay, so what about data lakes? Let's try uh, to use some external data in S3 and compare the performance. Here are some queries. Here are some numbers, but Please don't believe these numbers. You can copy paste these queries with me and see what will happen. So let's do it. I will not uh, try to do it on my desktop. I will go to I will go to ClickHouse Cloud because I have a service in ClickHouse Cloud and I will check how it will work with external data. It is 100 million uh, records table in the native format, compressed with DSTD as a bunch, bunch of files on S3 in a, a public bucket. It works, seven seconds, six, seconds. The next query is using S3 cluster table function. It will parallelize the processing by using multiple replicas. I have four replicas or four shards, does not matter on this service. So let's check the speed up. Two seconds, much better. Let's try another query. This query is different. It will use Parquet data format. It is quite popular, but is it better than native? I don't know. Six seconds, almost the same. Almost no difference. Now let's try S3 cluster, just in case. Three seconds. So looks like, looks like Parquet is not better than native, but comes very close. What will happen if I will use, I will not do something unusual. I will use data inside ClickHouse, inside a merge tree table. 
zero point nine. Yeah, much better. No comparison at all. The the lakes are not as good as ClickHouse. But we have something entirely new in the new release. Now we have support for Apache Udi and the Delta, Delta Lake format. What is it? Uh, these formats, and also we can add Apache Iceberg, but not yet. These formats have some advantages. They look like merge tree tables. So they containing data parts, and the data parts are merged in the background. So it looks like the people from, I don't know, Databricks or whatever other companies just looked at merge tree and had some thoughts like, why don't do exactly the same, but different. So this format's allowing incremental data insertion and quite similar to merge tree. But there are several disadvantages. They are from another world. What do I mean another world? It is the universe where Apache, Hadoop, Java are living. Do you like Java? I don't know. I am asking you. You can answer, but if you don't want, don't answer. It is not, you are not supposed to answer. So how do I characterize this another world of Apache, Hadoop, Java? It is a world when nothing works uh, at all until you, unless you configure everything in uh, 100 configuration files, and then maybe something will work. Okay, so let's try to use Delta Lake from ClickHouse. I have downloaded Spark and Hadoop and configured it and run it. And I have had uh, have some comments to convert my parquet file to Delta Lake. And as usual, it did not work. Actually, I figured it out. I figured it out how to make it work. Just specified 100 gigabytes of memory for this conversion and it worked fine. And let's try to see what happened. So what is Delta Lake? I published it to S3. Here is my S3 bucket. And you can see some data parts with checksums in the parquet format. So just a bunch of parquet, uh, parquet format files. And some Delta log that is represented by a bunch of JSON files containing uh, some recent, recent data and patches. And let me try to run this query. Now we have a table function for, for Delta Lake and Hoodie. I will use another server for this. Another server does not work. I will use yet another server for this. And I will check what will happen. What will happen? Actually, the server is in another region, so the comparison may not look fair. Ah, okay. I will try to run it from ClickHouse local. So, hmm. 
this server does not work, but this started to work. It is too slow. Way too slow. Something wrong with AWS credentials. You know, I will try to. Hmm. Okay, never mind. So, Delta uh, data lakes are not like data warehouses, not like click house. They work usually, sometimes with uh, somewhat decent performance, but not even approaching click house performance. Okay. But we also have some interesting feature that maybe can be compared with data lakes. Now we can simply take a merge tree table, take all the files, all the directories, copy to S3 exactly as it is. And then attach these tables on another server without any metadata. So the server may have no local state at all. And this feature is implemented with a new disk type, S3 plane. You just specify an endpoint and attach this query. You have to generate UUID, you have to use the directory structure with this UUID exactly as in local file system. And when you attach this query, just specify storage policy. And let's try some experiments. Again, let me copy paste. Uh, this query to check the performance. Seven seconds. You know, it is difficult to test the performance of S3 because it is actually external service that also has some caching inside, inside this service. And uh, it is adapting to, to your queries. So about two and, half, uh, two and a half seconds, not too bad and much better than every other data lake format. So this feature is like preview. Maybe you will find it useful but most, mostly it is for experiments. What else? You can make this query much better if you will add another disk with type cache. You specify a base uh, disk and uh, a path on local file system for cache and it will automatically accelerate your queries. So I will go to yet another server. I have many, many servers, so don't worry. Uh, and let's run this query. 1.2 seconds, 0 0.8. Wow, this query started to be faster, faster than the local query, but what if I will do just this? Merge tree, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 27 gigabytes per second. It is even faster. Okay. What about performance improvements? We have quite a few. 
So let's look at this query. This query from Wikistat table. Uh, the Wikistat table contains 400 billion records. And I will do reg regular expression filtering to find every Wikipedia page starting with click age. What I will find? Click healthy. Yes, I know that click house is healthy. Click health. Okay. Click house will help you. Click here. Click house is here, here for you. Click hold. Let's skip it. Click home. You can use click house in your home. And finally, click house. For some reason, click home has much more page views than click house. Okay, so in previous version, this query will take 400 seconds. In the new version, it will take 19 milliseconds. If I want to calculate how much faster it is, I will have to do some middle school arithmetic. Let's just suppose it is infinite time faster because now this function can use index if it is filtering by prefix. We already have this for like expression, but now also for much, much expression. So thank you, Clark, for improving performance of ClickHouse infinite number of times. What about some small bonuses? Uh, this is about table functions. If you have a read-only user, by default, you cannot use table functions. Before version 22.11, uh, in the 22.11, you have some subset of safe table functions. So the table functions that don't go to arbitrary hosts on the network, that don't store any data, that don't let you do anything even potentially dangerous. For example, the remote table function to connect to any remote ClickHouse server is not allowed to use because it allowed to go to any host on the network. But now you can use the cluster and cluster all replicas, functions in read-only mode because they will go only to some predefined subset of servers. It is perfectly safe to use. I hope you will find it useful. So what else? Another bonus. You can use query parameters in insert values. Pretty easy, nothing to explain. And what else? Documentation, embedded documentation. The best documentation is the documentation that is always up to date. The documentation that you can get straight from ClickHouse, straight from ClickHouse server. And now we have this documentation in the system asynchronous metrics table. Maybe you always wanted to know what jitter means. What does it mean if we have 84 microseconds of jitter? And now you know, this is just the scheduling latency. Okay, this was about ClickHouse server, ClickHouse local, ClickHouse client, but we also have a lot, a lot of integrations. 
for dbt now it has support for the new dbt version for python client a lot of improvements like integration with numpy for big integers for go library some improvements for javascript library now it has support for client side ssl certificate authentication i doubt you will ever need this but we do we need this so now we have it and improvement for our new integration with kafka click house kafka connect and let me remind you that you can start using ClickHouse today in ClickHouse Cloud. And we will give you up to 10 terabytes of data in our free trial. So this is probably the most easy way to start using ClickHouse if you don't use it yet. So that's it. Let me answer your questions. I spent less than one hour. It's a big achievement for me. Well, we have only one question, but we do have, uh, Vitor did answer your proposal as to why there might be less back braces than forward braces. And his suggestion, which I think is a good one, unless you think otherwise, is that it's possible that a, for a back brace could be on the same line as a forward brace. That's accounting for your mismatch in the count uh yes this is almost true what do i mean almost true so if you have opening brace and closing brace on the same line you will not get in the report uh, the line with just a single uh, opening brace and you will not get uh, the result with a line with just a single closing brace. They will be represented on a single item. Yeah, okay, okay. fair. <laughs> so, so the answer is actually incorrect, but I hope someone will give the correct answer. And it is related to C++. And actually it is related to C. Uh, what about the fact that some lines have a closing, you know, so closing semicolon? Exactly. Okay, that's that's Jordi suggested that. So, Jordi, if you want to send us an email to community at ClickHouse, because I don't have your surname, um, Alexi's promised a T-shirt. Good answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the only question that we had. Um, was with respect to S3 Reuni Discs, and hopefully I'm pronouncing this name right, uh, via, via Shesla said, can one server write to S3 Discs and other servers read directly from this? That's a plain S3. Uh, not quite, because this S3 Disc is read-only. Uh, in fact, it is almost read-only. It is like write once, read many but when you are writing merge tree table it has to be merged in background and for this reason you cannot use this s3 plane disk for simply uh, writing a merge tree table but you can write it once manually just manually copy the, the data files and you can create whatever number of servers you want. You can create 100 of servers that will look at your data. Okay, so in that sense, we you, you can't have continuous write continuous writes to it, and mm -hmm. then have other servers reading from it at the at this moment. Okay. Yeah, it's it's not like who did Delta Lake. Actually, it is worse. <laughs> Um, there's a question here, but it's not a technical question, but uh, I'll defer it to you, Alexi. Uh, are we planning a long-term free tier in, in ClickHouse Cloud, like AWS or Oracle free tier? Free tier, yeah, it is very interesting, and I'm thinking about this. 
We did not decide yet. Maybe we will have a free tier. Maybe we will have a free tier for some qualified uh, qualified users like academic usages, uh, scientific research. If you do something really great with ClickHouse, we will offer you a free tier, maybe even uh, something like extended free tier. Actually, actually it is, it is uh, limited by the cost of this free tier. If we will make something that will cost for us, like, I don't know, $5 dollars a month, $10 a month, maybe we will, uh, we will afford giving it for free under certain conditions. Uh, one one other question is, uh, I know this, you're probably, you're quite perfectly, probably quite frustrated about this. What happened to your OS, uh, OSA con presentation, Alexei? You know, you had some issues last week. Ah, very interesting story. So uh, they were using some Zoom uh, software for conference, conferences, not like webinar I have today, but something where you can list the talks and so on. So I joined to find out that I cannot share my screen for some reason. I tried several times, joined again, no success. I was thinking, okay, I will restart my PC. And when I tried to restart my PC, guess what happened? I did not <laughs> restart it for like three months or, or half a year, I don't remember. So it appeared that Linux installed a new kernel uh, and this new kernel was bad. <laughs> it did not work. And the driver for NVIDIA went uh, somewhere. Ah, Linux problems. So after 20 minutes, I joined it again to find out that the restart did not help and I cannot share my screen. <laughs> I decided to simply apologize and uh, cancel my talk. I connected with uh, the organizers and I will present this talk on uh, December 14th. Uh, December 14th on the ClickHouse Meetup in Bay Area. This is not uh, the official ClickHouse Meetup. It is organized by a third party company, but I will present my talk and uh, it is, I have all the content and it should be really nice and fu funny. Okay, hopefully we can get a recording and we'll make sure to get it on our YouTube page when it's available, or at least provide a link to it so people can watch it for those of us who can't make it to California. Um, I think that's it. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Alexi, for presenting today. Is, is there anything else you want to add before we sign off? Yeah, thank you, Dale, and uh, special thanks for all the articles in our blog. If you enjoy my enjoying my webinar, you will also find interesting content at clickhouse.com slash blog. Ah, and a final question is, uh, will we organize a meetup for ClickHouse developers? Um, okay, Tyler's answered. Yeah, I think that's a really great idea. So Tyler's mm -hmm. gonna take that one. I think that's a fantastic idea. So maybe we can do something there. Yeah, I like this idea. And especially I would like to organize this meetup in person, like ClickHouse Summit, ClickHouse Developers, Summit. Yeah, we can call it ClickCon or something. ClickCon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a, a little bit like a web summit of some form. Okay, thanks everybody, and see you next time. Yeah, thank you. Ciao.